Good morning, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday and welcome to another opportunity to worship virtually with Mount Zion United Methodist Church. We would like to welcome all of our guests who are joining us this morning, whether you are here on Zoom for the first time or maybe you're worshiping with us virtually via Facebook. We know you have many options and we're just glad that you chose to worship with us this morning. Please feel free to use the chat or the Facebook comments in order to engage and interact with us during worship. And just as a reminder to everyone via Zoom, this worship service is being recorded and live streamed via Facebook. So please remain on mute unless asked to do otherwise and feel free to turn your cameras on or off, whatever you desire. We're glad everyone is here. And so let's get started with this morning's worship by beginning first with an opening prayer. Please bow your heads and pray with me. Gracious Lord, we thank you for another day and another opportunity to join together from our individual homes and spaces to worship. Lord, we know we don't need to welcome you here because you are already present, dwelling within each one of us, dwelling within our individual homes. And so, Lord, we just simply want to acknowledge your presence and ask that you will have your way during this worship service. Lord, your people are coming to you this morning, some of us with hearts filled with gladness, some of us with hearts filled with sadness. Lord, we're coming to you this morning with concerns and worries and in states of mourning. But despite it all, Lord, we are here. And we know that you know every need and every desire and every concern of your people. And so we just ask that you would touch each person who was here this morning during worship, allow something that is said or read, something that is preached or sung, touch the very hearts and minds of your people and be what we need to get us through this day and the upcoming week. Lord, we love you. We praise you. And it is our honor and privilege to worship with you and one another this morning. Amen. We will begin with a song of meditation. We're blessed. Oh. 
Good morning, Mount Zion. For those of you on the phone that cannot see me, this is James Featherston, and I will be reading your scripture today. I'll be reading from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, and it reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light. So through him, all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. May God add a blessing to, a read, to the reading, hearing, and understanding of his most holy word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, James. We will now have another opportunity to worship through song with a song meditation from the Mount Zion Choir. He is exalted.
Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The king is exalted on high. Give God some praise right in your house where you are. We are worshiping God on today in spite of it all. God is exalted. The king is exalted on high. Amen. You know how when it's a cloudy day, thick, dark clouds covering the sky, or, or, or it's a steely gray overcast day, and it feels like an impenetrable steel dome is like over the sky. But then the sun pierces through unexpectedly. And because it's coming through the clouds, it's um, rays look so sharp, they look so clear. It's almost like you can touch the sun. Isn't that a beautiful sight to see? Well, life feels like that cloudy day sometimes, doesn't it? Sometimes life can feel like that long, steely, uh, gray-covered, cloud-covered day. Everything seems sad. It's like bad news after bad news after bad news, and it just feels like it's pouring all over your soul. Anybody ever felt like that? But then, out of nowhere, a ray of hope comes down as if from heaven it, and it gives you the courage to carry on. Anybody ever had this happen? Anybody ever felt that experience, that, that ray of hope just when you needed it? I'm Reverend Selena Johnson, um, pastor at Mount Zion uh, United Methodist Church in Georgetown, and this is our Living Light series. We are in part three of the Living Light series where we are focusing on real ways to live out our real lives in the light of Jesus Christ. And we are in John chapter one, verses one through nine. So this third uh, sermon is entitled Cloud Piercer. Cloud Piercer. Let us pray. Holy and awesome God, we need you right now. We need you to show up and move through this word. So remove me from myself so that we might hear from you and that all the hearts that are meditating on this during the worship service, after the worship service online, and maybe even months, weeks, months, years from now, will be able to feel your touch and hear your word. So remove me from myself. In Jesus' name, amen. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, and so I want to encourage you today to be aware of where your your mental health is. Um, be self-aware. Be aware of the trauma that you may have experienced. Be aware of the trauma you may be experiencing even right now. Be aware of the trauma of this pandemic that we've been collectively experiencing, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Be aware of the trauma of being black in America and the racial trauma that we're all going through. I mean, rep except for Representative Tim Scott, he, he says there's no problem with racism in America. I, I, I beg to differ. But all, but all lives go through trauma. So, so May is the time where we get to pause and reflect and recognize where we are. So I want to encourage you to be honest with your soul. I want to encourage you also to be kind to your soul and let life return, right? So we are in John chapter one. And if you go back to the beginning of John chapter one, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word was in the beginning with God. Everything came into being through the word. And without the word, nothing came into being. And then in our focal verse for today, it says in verse three, what came into being through the word was life. Somebody say life. And the life was the light for all people. So often, friends, we have bad mental health when we give up on life. 
And so this word with a, with a capital W that John wrote about was life. And that life was the light for all people. And we know that this word that John is talking about is Jesus himself, because later on in verse 14, John writes, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, friends, is who I'm talking about today as well. Jesus is the cloud piercer. He pierces right through the trauma to bring light back into life. Oh, hallelujah. He has the power to cut right through the dark clouds of your life, of my life, to bring light back into life. He did it for me. I just want to share with you um, a testimony, another testimony concerning the light. So back in December of 2004, December 16th, I'll never forget that day, um, my first daughter, Taylor Marie Johnson, was stillborn, uh, born with, without life. And um, at first I, I took it in stride, um, mourning and weeping, yes, but encouraged that we would go on to have more children soon. But then month after month went by and no child. And then months turn into years, right? No pregnancy. Um, and it became like the trauma just kind of caught up to me. It, it, it became like a steel gray dullness overshadowing my life, just over the top of my life, right? Everything felt so dreary and I, 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 I didn't want to, I, I couldn't really tell anybody about it. it. It wasn't clinical depression, but it was, it was more of just a dreariness in my soul. Then one evening, here's what Jesus did. I just happened to be listening to a Christian radio that evening. And um, I don't remember what show was on. I don't remember the name of the guest who they had on, but I do recall her testimony concerning the light. I, she began to describe what she had gone through. She had gone through a trauma as well. I don't know the details. I don't remember the details of it. She had gone through a trauma and um, she started to describe how she felt. She said she felt dreary. She felt weary, worn, sad. It was as if the luster had gone out of life, as, as if the luster had gone out of life, the light of life was no longer with her. Oh, she said, she said, she said, I know Jesus. I know Jesus. I know I'm saved. I, I, I'm not suicidal, but she just thought that there was nothing good worth living for. And what she described as she was talking, it just pierced my soul because it was exactly how I was feeling. I didn't want to talk about it. I felt like the rest of my life was going to be just a dreary march, marking out time under the sad, gloomy sky, just marching forward, making life happen until death happened. But my ears perked up as this lady was talking, right? My ears, my soul perked up as she was talking. Her self-awareness and her honest self-assessment really touched me pierced me right in my soul because what she was saying was raw. It was real. And she validated that what I was feeling was okay. She validated that it was okay to talk about it, that it was okay to admit it, that it was okay to feel it even as a Christian. Her testimony encouraged me because you know what? Ultimately, there were better days that came ahead in her life. Ultimately, the cloud piercer broke through her dark clouds as well. I don't recall the details, but I remember she testified that every life has seasons. Her testimony gave me hope that maybe, just maybe, this was only one season of my life. Maybe, just maybe, trouble don't last always. Her testimony gave me hope that maybe, just maybe, weeping does only endure for the night. And maybe, just maybe, Joy does come in the morning. What's your testimony concerning the light? And are you willing to share it with somebody? Somebody you don't even know, somebody you may not even ever see could be affected by your testimony next week. 
There's a song by Israel Houghton that I really like. It's called, It's Not Over. It starts off like this. It says, it's not over. It's not finished. It's not ending. It's only the beginning. When God is in it, all things are new. And then he goes on to, uh, it, when they get deep into the song and really start singing, they say, here comes the sun piercing the clouds. You're closer than you think you are. You're closer than you've been before. So look to the sky. Help is on the way. Our God is faithful, faithful to say, it's not over. It's not over. So I want to encourage you today in the S-O-N sun, that that sun pierces through the dark clouds. I want to submit to you today that sun piercing through the clouds is actually more beautiful than a bright cloudy day, right? <laughs> Don't miss that sun piercing through the clouds is actually more beautiful than a bright, clear, sunny day all the time. Some of you remember that old New Edition song, they said sunny days, everybody loves those. But tell me, baby, can you stand the rain, <laughs> right? Everybody loves a sunny day, but I want to submit to you today that a cloudy day with just those few precious sunbeams breaking through the clouds is even more beautiful than a bright and sunny day because after you've endured the rain, oh hallelujah, after you've been through the storm, after the thunder and lightning have torn your life apart, hey, have broken your heart into pieces, those rays of light are so powerful. They're a concentrated light. They seem to come all the way down from heaven and touch the earth. They seem to come all the way down from heaven and touch you right in your soul. It's like heaven touching earth. That's what it looks like. It looks like heaven touching earth, y'all. The cloud piercing sun is so amazing. If you never went through the rain, if you never went through the storm, you wouldn't be able to appreciate the cloud piercer who is Jesus the Christ. That's why Jesus never promised his disciples a rose walk. He never promised them that it was going to be easy. Uh, he never promised them a, a cakewalk, I mean. In, in, in fact, he said, in this life you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. Jesus overcame the darkness of this world. He's the cloud piercer. He pierced right through the dark clouds of Golgotha with skulls and death all around him. He pierced right through that. He pierced right through the taunting. He pierced right through the teasing. He pierced right through the ridicule. He pierced through the injustice. He pierced right through the shame. He pierced right through the guilt. He pierced right through the sadistic torture. He pierced right through the gleam, gloominess and the despair that his disciples felt when he rose up from the grave, oh hallelujah, he pierced right through the grief and the utter despair that they were feeling um, when he appeared in the room and said, peace be with you. <laughs> he pierced right through their fears, friends. He pierced right through their doubts. He pierced right through their failing faith. And he will do the same for you and me today. It was, it was like heaven touching earth. <laughs> it, it was like heaven touching earth when Jesus appeared again. If Jesus had not gone through that gloom, we would not be able to see the light beaming down so strongly. He, he'll pierce right through whatever gloom and doom is overshadowing your life. It's not over until God says it's done, oh hallelujah. The sun piercing through the clouds is even more beautiful than your perfect, bright, sunny days. Because without the dark clouds, we wouldn't be able to see the power of that light beam touching earth. That's why I'm so confident. I'm confident, y'all, that finally, in the end, something good is going to come out of all of this. Mm. Something good has to come out of all of this. Something good, finally, in the end, is going to come out of this COVID pandemic. I don't know what it is, but I'm trusting. Something good, finally, in the end, is going to come out of this racial trauma. Something good finally in the end is gonna come out of your trauma and my trauma. And we're gonna come out with a testimony to the light. Oh, I can't make it happen. 
and you can't make it happen because we are not that light. We're just here to testify to the light. I don't know what our cloud piercer testimonies are going to be, but we're going to know that it was the cloud piercer who beamed down from heaven right down to earth and touched our souls. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. If you are here today and you are not sure that you know this powerful one, the one who can pierce through the clouds, the one who will hold you close when you are brokenhearted, you need to confess Jesus on, to, on today. I don't want anybody, you should not leave this cyberspace if you do not know Jesus for yourself. So if that's you, I want you to just pray this prayer and just say, Jesus, Pierce through my sin. You know what it is. And you endured the cross for me. So I pray that you would save me, Jesus, and forgive me. In your name, amen. Amen, friends. The call now is for um, prayer to go before God in prayer. So if you have any praise reports you'd like to share or any um, prayer requests you'd like to share, we just uh, ask you to, you can drop them in the chat or if you want to unmute yourself and just uh, speak it out, you can. Let me check our chat here. Pastor, this is Gail. My husband just got a call that his mom has fallen and bust her head. So they're on the way to take her to the hospital. Her name is Dora Smiley. Can you just keep her in prayer? Oh, oh my goodness. Yes. Um, Dora Smiley. We will lift her up and them for traveling mercies. I'm so sorry to hear that. Okay, anybody else have a prayer request or a praise report you'd like to lift up? I want us to- This is Dolores. Hi, Dolores. Hi, um, I'm gonna have a, a, a medical procedure this week. So I'd like to uh, ask for prayer. Thank you. Okay, we will lift you up in prayer. Yeah. <laughs> This is Leon. Um, oh, just prayer for uh, everyone in uh, Elizabeth City, North Carolina. My, uh, my family is from the middle part of the state, but we have friends and family in school at Elizabeth City. So for the, for the entire uh, Elizabeth City in the state of North Carolina. Okay. Yes, we will lift them up in prayer, especially your families that, that is there. Um, I'd also like to lift up uh, James. I don't know him, but his mom came to the dinners last night and she wanted us to lift him up in prayer um, so that he would get off of the street and get housing. And I also would love, of course, we're gonna to continue to lift up our family members, our church family members, lifting up the Underwood family as they grieve the loss of, um, of Maria Sanders. Are there other prayer requests or praise reports? If I, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, this is Patrice. Hi, Patrice. Vaughn, I, I um, just wanted to, since I have them all here, uh, today, Jackie, Patrice, Marcus, Valeria. I'm, I, I love y'all guys. Mm -hmm. I love y'all guys, okay? Mm -hmm. Every last one of you. I love y'all guys. 30 mm -hmm. years, long time. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. I love y'all guys, okay? We love you. Thank too. you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're sharing that. 
That's the essence of our Christian life. We love God and love our neighbor, especially our families. Pray neighbors will understand their actions can harm others and that they change their actions. Okay. Thank you, Alice, for sharing that prayer request. I uh, would just like to thank God for uh, Maria having a safe journey as she transitioned uh, wrap your arm, God wrap your arms around the family. Uh, as we go forward, it's a tough road, but uh, God bless us all. Yes, amen, amen. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. God, we love you we love you we love you lord today um, because you loved us in your special way and we praise you we lift you up we magnify you oh god lord on today um even as our hearts are heavy we are um giving you glory we're giving you honor we pray that you would have your own way in our lives lord we know that uh, our lives are in your hands. We pray that you would heal our broken hearts, that you would bind up the broken hearts in ways that we cannot understand and put pieces back together in ways that we cannot understand that only you can do because you are the healer. Touch those who have been traumatized, um, especially uh, those in Elizabeth City. Um, uh, we pray for uh, Gail's husband's mother, her mother-in-law, uh, who fell and has had trauma to the head. We pray for her healing, God. We pray um, for James and that he, uh, as he's traumatized from living on the streets, would find uh, a place of rest, a place to call home, God, but especially uh, rest for his soul in you, Lord. We pray, God, for um, healing for the Underwood family, for, for everybody there, that uh, they would know your love and that you hold them so close at this time and that you collect every tear into a bottle at this time. Help them to just love each other as you have loved us because that's the commandment you gave us that we should love one another as you have loved us and this would be a witness that we are yours. And so we thank you for um, that commandment to love you, God, and to love our neighbor, and that these are our, our honest and best commitments on this earth. We pray for neighbors who are not acting loving at this time, that you would touch their hearts, God, and that they would uh, be understanding of those um, that are next to them, that are in the vicinity of them that might be hurt or harmed or in danger from what they would be doing. We pray for a healing spirit to wash over this nation as well, that you would soothe our spirits, that you would give us that love as well. God, we know you can turn it around late in the midnight hour when it seems so dark, we don't think it's possible. We know you can turn it around. So we're trusting you, God. We're exalting your name. And we just say we love you on today. And we count it all done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, friends. Now we are going to go into, hopefully you have something to eat and drink. We are going to share uh, some breaking of the bread together as we go into the love feast. And I'm going to ask our worship leader, Sherelle, to uh, lead us in that call. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we gather in our homes this morning, realizing just how fragile this world is as we are forced to confront just how vulnerable we are. In a world of violence, hate, greed, and isolation, in a church searching to find its way, we continue to look for global healing from the COVID-19 crisis through this restorative service of old called the Love Feast or Agape Feast. It is in this Agape Feast where adversaries become friends, Friends become neighbors, and the Christian family embraces everyone. So let us join together in the sharing of the blessings of food and drink, just as the first Christians did in ancient times. When they broke bread together, 
they expected Jesus to show up. The history of the feast as a celebration born simply out of love, generosity, and fellowship is beautiful. Christians today must be grateful for the resurrection of the celebration by the Moravians and also for the vitality given to it by Charles Wesley, one of the founders of Methodism. The feast is appropriate in any Christian setting and can nourish the hearts and souls of Christians in so many ways. At its most basic, the love feast is an experience of warmth and sharing, a commemoration of the early church. At its most symbolic, the love feast is a means of God's grace that is experienced in the fellowship with each other and with God. But the simplest explanation of the love feast to which one can respond when asked is that it is a way to remember Christ's presence on earth during his life and after his resurrection as well. It is also a way to celebrate with gratitude the spirit of God's love. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for the life and knowledge which you have revealed through Jesus your child and our brother. To you, O oh God, be glory, dominion and power forever. As the piece of bread was scattered over the hills and then brought together and made one, so let your church be brought together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory and the power through Jesus Christ forever, amen. So here before us, we have um, some bread and uh, something to drink. It is important to know that the love feast is not the Eucharist feast, um, but it is a feast of love and fellowship. And as uh, Sherelle said in the, in the first litany, the people expected Jesus to show up when they ate together. So let us commemorate our unity through Jesus Christ and feast on his spirit of love. Let us eat and drink to the glory of God. Amen. And now, if you would, we're going to try this together. I know it doesn't sound in sync when we are on Zoom. But if you would unmute yourself so that we might say the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Our Father, Give us the day, the daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. 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 All right. I would like to, um, at this time, we're going to do something a little different. Our uh, reopening team was able to meet yesterday. And so I want to I throw up a quick survey. If you are here and you are on uh, the video Zoom, I want you to just, uh, this is anonymous, to just click on, would you come to an in-person service if, if the church were open in August? Um, if not, you know, like when would you be ready? And there's some options there. Fall of 2021, winter of 2021, spring of 2022, when the majority of the population is vaccinated, when COVID deaths are significantly lower. Um, yeah, so just take a moment. We have five people who've already weighed in. If you're on the phone, you're going to have to either call me or send me an email about what you think about these things. Myrtle, I see, the, I see you there on Facebook. Uh, would you be ready to um, come back into the church in August in person? Or would you say fall 2021, winter 2021, spring 2022? 
when more people are vaccinated, when it, well, almost everybody's vaccinated, or when COVID deaths are significantly lower. Ooh, it stopped the poll. Okay. All right, it says, okay, this is where we are. Hmm. All right, can you all see that? No, we just see the poll, not the results. Okay. All right, okay, so my technology, I don't know. Hmm. Let me see. People already voted. Okay, it seems to be doing it all over again. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Hmm. Okay. All right, I'm gonna have to try it again one more time. Then I'm just gonna download it when it finishes. All right, we got to try it one more time, y'all, because uh, some somehow I clicked away from the results. But uh, would you would you be prepared to come back in in August, or if not August, what do you think? When would be the time? You want us to do it again? Yeah, you have to do it again. I'm sorry, I did, I clicked something and it just it ended the poll too soon. <laughs> Excuse me, is that all the percentages that was up at the very end? Is that what you were talking about? Yeah, did you, could you see it? I did. You did? But, I mean, everybody might not have. It had the percentages of each question and how it. Oh, it did, okay, because yeah. I couldn't see the results even though it had ended the poll. So that's why I launched it again. So just uh, give, give it one more shot and see. Okay. Okay, can you all see that? Okay, 36% said yes, 64% said no. 27% um, said fall, 1%, I mean 9% said winter. 9% said spring of 2022, 45% when, when more people are vaccinated and 9% um, when the desk rates go down. Okay. All right, I made sure I downloaded that. So all that I'll have that for later. All right, let's go to our offering where we um, have an offering video from our co-host, Patrice, would you like to pray, play that? No, I can't turn it off. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Friends, this is your moment to participate in the mission and ministry that God is doing in and through Mount Zion United Methodist Church. We are so excited to continue our weekly meals for the shelter challenge continue our can that be louder and our marvelous music ministry our virtual history tour celebrating all that god has done these 205 years through the oldest african-american congregation in the nation's capital and we're just so blessed And so we ask you to prayerfully consider now your giving of your tithe or your offering on today. You can give online. Go to mtzionumcdc.org and click on the giving tab. 
you scroll down, you can fill out the form to get through the website. Or you can use Cash App. The cash tag is dollar sign, capital M-T-Z-I-O-N, capital U-M-C, capital G in Georgetown. You can also use PayPal through our online interface or by just using the church's email address. Or you can send a check directly to us. Mount Zion UMC 1334 29th Street Northwest DC 20007. Amen. Let's look to the Lord in prayer once more. God, we are thankful that you provide for us, and this good green earth has been a great provision. We pray, O oh God, that as we offer up our gifts unto you, that you would touch them as only you can. Multiply them um, and make them fruitful for ministry here on earth, in your kingdom here on earth, just as it is in heaven. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Just a few announcements before we um, before we go to breakout rooms. Um, our virtual tour, we are not meeting today because we have postponed until anniversary in October. So uh, the team is not gonna meet this week, but I'll be contacting you all about when our next uh, meetings are and how we can continue to move forward. Um, next week, May 9th, there'll be an opportunity for a time of testimony. Uh, not more than two minutes, friends. Um, so uh, as you have been meditating on the, the word of God, I'm sure God has given you some testimony to the light. Um, on the 30th, May 30th, we are gonna be doing a joint service with Dumbarton and worshiping with them online at 11 a.m. because their service is at 11. We are visiting with them this time as they have visited with us before. And so fine. And, um, on May 15th, uh, our brother James has told us that they're gonna have a drive-by graduation celebration for Lauren. So if you're willing to drive down to where they live, <laughs> you can drive by and congratulate her. And finally, um, uh, mark your calendar. So Maria's funeral is going to be on May 13th. That's a Thursday at um, the, the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden's uh, the, the Bright Seed Ministry Center on Thursday, May 13th. The viewing is at 10 a.m. and the funeral is going to be at 11 a.m. So please continue to keep the family in your prayers. All right, let's look to the Lord for final benediction and then we'll have a moment to go to breakout rooms. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you as God is gracious unto you may be gracious unto your neighbor. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace that passes all understanding. And may you pass the peace to your neighbors. Amen. Amen, friends. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording.